Hello all, happy Friday. I hope you've had a good week. Um, the other day I popped a video out which got some great feedback, thank you to those that messaged me and put some comments below, around about why fat loss is hard. Um, and the fact that carbohydrates are our primary source of energy. And the fact that probably, I think we all appreciate this, that we probably eat too many of them. But when they are readily available, our body will rarely, rarely use our fat stores for whatever, for energy, for burning, for getting rid of. It's primarily going to use glucose, which is broken down carbohydrates. And that is why fat loss can be a real uphill battle. So what I thought I'd do is go a little step further and give you a bit of an explanation as to why many of us, many of you, many of us, um, are almost like addicted to carbohydrates, why we can't break that cycle of reducing carbs. As I said, I think we all appreciate that we need to reduce the amount of carbs we have, but why is it so bloody hard to reduce them? Um, and there is a reason behind it. It's not just a case of weak-willed. There is a physiological, hormonal, and I've got an itchy eye, uh, hormonal reason as to why we find it bloody hard to reduce carbohydrate intake. And so I'm gonna show you that now. Okay, are you ready? I'm going in for another one of my very technical drawings. Let me get, I have actually found the way now. Last time I had to turn the camera around and everything was a bit back to front. But I found the technical way of um, pressing one of these buttons which will flip the camera. It is a little bit different to using the camera. It's on the Facebook Live, but anyway, that's talking away. Let's turn this around. All right, look at that. No, it is not some kind of a, sex doll uh this is me obviously spike hair big ears there you go um all right here's what happens let me give you a little example here what happens when we eat carbohydrates and when we're talking about carbohydrates just for those of you that have hit this as a gray area carbs are all of your your breads if anyone tunes into the video right now they're going to be a bit worried about that but uh we're talking about breads we're talking about sweets we're talking about vegetables fruits pastas grains, pulses, hey, someone's come on, you're wondering why that picture is there. Um, they're all the things, and basically, all carbohydrates, no matter, uh, varying speeds, will get broken down into sugar. So here's what happens, let me give it, let me move this into my right hand so I can draw. All right, in our mouth goes, <sighs> some carbs, this is proper technical stuff, um, comes down into your body, into your digestive system, into your stomach, and it breaks it down. Carbohydrates, as I said before, get broken down at varying speeds, but quite quickly compared with fats and protein. So it gets broken down in the digestive system pretty quickly. And what happens is, as I say, it gets broken down into sugars, and these sugars get released into our bloodstream, all over our body for energy. It gets broken down everywhere. It looks like a bit of a train track. It looks like a bloody car crash um and there's blood sugar believe it or not that is going in there and what that does is as we well know when we eat carbohydrates especially if we eat uh sugars cakes chocolate all of those things it turns our mouth from yeah looking like a sex doll as i say into a oh hello into a big smile because we get this quick sugar release into in the body it boosts our energy levels temporarily because our blood sugar levels have boosted. What happens here though is, and this is why, let me get rid of that bit, this is why sometimes it is, or quite often it is bloody hard to break the carb roller coaster because this little organ there is called your pancreas. And what it does is it goes out and pulls the sugar, the carbohydrates, out of your blood system because too much sugar in the body is very toxic to our cells and our tissue. It can actually, hence diabetes, break down tissue and damage our tissue in our body with too much sugar in the body. Believe it or not, uh, let me write this up here. I said the other day that our body can store between four and 500 grams of carbohydrates. And it stores them in our muscles and in our liver. Bearing in mind it can store four to 500 grams, how much at any given point during the day, how much sugar is in our blood system? We have four to five liters of blood running around our body at any one time. How much sugar do you reckon is within our four to five liters of blood? Well, it is in fact uh, roughly four grams of sugar, which is one 
Teaspoon. So there is sod all sugar running around our body at any one time. So when we consume, let's say, whatever, a Mars bar, a cake, something like that, you're probably looking at around about 30 to 40 grams of sugar running around the body at any one time. Bearing in mind our body only likes four grams, that is a hell of a lot of a hit. So what happens is insulin gets released out of the pancreas and starts pulling all of these sugars into our cells. There's a cell, there's a cell, there's a cell. Pull it out, pull it out, pull it out, because it is not safe to have all of that sugar running around in our blood system, so it pulls it into the cells. But here is why it can be bloody hard to break the carb cycle. Because insulin not just gets released in the, uh, in the pancreas, it gets released, there's my little brain, in our brain. And when it gets released in our brain, it triggers a hormone called dopamine. Let me move this back around again. Dopamine is our feel-good hormone. Uh, it gets released when we drink alcohol, when we go on, not for me, but when we go on uh, rides at the fun fair, things like that. Things that create excitement. Uh, drug Drugs, in, what's the word I'm looking for? Ingesting or however we take drugs, however we take them, however people take them, uh, triggers dopamine. It's the feel-good hormone. But insulin in the brain through the release of sugars actually releases dopamine. So we feel fantastic. If you think about it, any time that you're feeling down, any time that you're, let me put the camera back. I think you've seen enough of that one. Any time that you're feeling pretty crap, pretty down, your brain has this little trigger because in the past, you have eaten sugar, you have eaten carbohydrates, you have eaten uh, pizza, which is carbohydrates, but I'm coming up with foods. You've eaten all of these things to make you feel better. And that is why, because it triggers the release of dopamine in the brain. And as soon as you have it, oh, I feel better. Oh, I'll have a drink, a nice relaxing drink. Oh, I feel better now. And what happens is there is um, a section in the brain uh, which basically does this fired and wired. It remembers sections, it remembers emotions, and triggers them again for next law. Uh, it's called Hebb's law. If you want to look it up, I think it's H E B B. Is it H E B B S? H E B B E S, maybe. Hebb's law, which is what gets fired together gets wired together. So we've had in the past all of these feelings around feel crap, feel crap. Oh, hang on a minute. Last time I had a drink, or last time I had pizza, or last time I had this, I felt pretty good after. And it starts to remember these emotions, and so it brings it back again. Any time you feel crap. Hey, don't you remember, Mark, last time that you had a cookie? You felt pretty good. Right, I feel crap. I need to feel good. I'll have a cookie. And that's what goes on from there. And this is why carbs can be hard to beat because it triggers and releases blood sugar and into dopamine from there. And if you think about it, a lot of convenience food nowadays, ready-made stuff in a packet, is purely carb-based. For that, it's like a, they've almost, uh, marketing has got you hooked around. It's almost like a drug. It purely is. Sugar is purely like a drug because, as you've seen there, it releases sugar into the body pretty quickly, fires off to the brain, releases dopamine, I feel good. So it's like crack. If you've um, heard before around about uh, drug dealers tend to give out very small amounts of cocaine and things like this to clients to get them hooked. And once they're hooked, they have to keep coming back and back and back. Not quite as drastic, but that is what happens purely with sugar. You have it, signals to the brain, I feel good. Next time you feel crap, you go for what makes you feel good again, and it goes from there. And so there is a reason why, or a couple of reasons why, carbs can be hard to break down because there is that uh, hormonal release into it. If you've seen the post that I've put in the last couple of days, the guys that have been on the four week fat loss in the uh, what are we up to, two weeks now, a lot of them have broken this sugar craving because what we've done is we've taken carbohydrate intake down, which has then reduced this amount of insulin that gets released because it's not having to be released, and we've increased our fat and protein intake to stop the requirement for uh, carbohydrates for energy, and to almost dumb down, push down the lid on top of insulin. Because the other big thing around insulin, this hormone, as I say, that gets released every time we eat carbohydrates, is if you think of a if you think of a flame like that, if that's your fat burning going on there and it's soaring high, there's the top of the flame. As soon as you eat carbs and insulin gets released, insulin is a storage hormone. And so what it does is it turns it back down, or let's say it takes you to that. It really turns down the flame on fat burning. So if you are continuously eating carbohydrates, again, kick fat loss out the window because it's not going to happen. You're putting yourself into storage mode. And one little side thing that's just come to brain, or mind on here, come to brain, uh, is this. 
stress, no matter what format of stress it is, releases insulin, which slows down fat burning. And why is that? Well, the reason is when we go into stress, we go into what's called our sympathetic nervous system, which is our fight or flight one. Anytime we stress, what happens? Our heart rate goes up. We feel a bit sweaty. Um, pupils start to dilate. Adrenaline gets released because it's pushing us into fight or flight mode. Our body doesn't, or our brain doesn't recognize that, oh, it's only because we've had an argument with the boss or we've read an email that's pissed us off or something like that. It just pushes us because we're stressing and releases all these hormones into fight or flight mode. And what happens is, moving into fight or flight, what happens? We need to fight or we need to flight. And so the body will start pushing blood down to our legs, ready for that kind of action. It moves blood away from our digestive system. And by doing that, it starts to uh, release blood sugar from the liver into the system, ready for energy, ready to fight, ready to flight. And so any time blood sugar goes up, insulin goes up, storage hormone to pull it out again. It's like a double-edged sword. And so this is a big reason why if you're uh, stressing a lot or you find that you are quite highly strung during the day, another reason why you might wanna start looking at uh, relaxation techniques, let's try that again, relaxation techniques, um, because it's another double-edged sword. Like carbohydrates, stress is a huge one for promoting fat fat gain. Nearly went for fat loss. You can't promote fat loss. Yeah, of course you can. Mm -hmm. That's what we want. Uh, promoting fat gain. This is what happens when you do live videos. You can't correct her. Promotes fat gain, stress, alongside carbohydrate intake. And they sort of tend to go hand in hand because any time we feel stressed, any time we feel down, we reach for carbohydrates. And it's a massive, vicious circle. All right, there you go. I think I've given you quite a little bit of info. So um, I will now go and remove my groovy little drawing. What a weird drawing. Um, any questions, far away. Glad to know your comments. And um, I'll certainly give you a few more updates on it as well. I'll speak to you later. And have a great weekend. Goodbye.